Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 11 to 17. It's the Gospel for the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, Year C. St. Luke writes, Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd, so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so, and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. That's from Luke chapter 9, verse 11 to 17, for the Feast of Corpus Christi, year C. We are led to think of the Eucharist. Whenever we read the Holy Scriptures, we must bear in mind that they are the fruit of the action of a single divine author, the Holy Spirit. If you read several works of a particular author, you will see similarities in those different works. One result of this is that what we read in one part of the scriptures reminds us of similarities that we notice in another part, simply because all parts of the scriptures, and therefore all similarities, have the same divine author. Those similarities across the scriptures throw light especially on the person and teaching of our Lord because he is the great centerpiece of the entire scriptures. The gospel that I've read from Luke chapter 9 verse 11 to 17 provides us with a case in point. Our Lord by the power of his simple word fed 5,000 men with a mere five loaves and two fish. There is at least one other instance in the gospel of this kind of miracle when he fed a crowd of 4,000, Matthew chapter 15, verse 32 to 38. And in one of his conversations with his disciples, he refers to both events. It was obvious that if he chose to, he could effortlessly feed all of God's people. Such is the power of his divine word. Undoubtedly, many of those who witnessed this were reminded of God feeding his people in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. God fed them from heaven then, with manna in the desert, just as he did through the word of Christ in our gospel event today. St. John tells us in his gospel that the next day our Lord told the people that in fact he himself is the bread come down from heaven, the true bread that gives life to the world. That is to say, Christ chose to describe himself in terms of the bread with which he himself had fed the crowds, and in terms of the manna with which God had nourished his people in the wilderness. God could and would provide for all his chosen people on their journey to heaven, and this he does in the person of Christ. Now can we pinpoint Christ feeding the people of God everywhere and through all the ages with the bread of heaven which is himself? We can. And it is in the Holy Eucharist in which is contained every heavenly blessing. The account of the manna coming from God in the desert is contained in the book of Exodus. Also in the book of Exodus is the account of the appearance of God to Moses on Mount Sinai and the witnessing by the people of the awesome phenomena associated with that presence of God. There was thunder and lightning and a shuddering spectacle. No faith was required to be convinced that it was indeed the living God who was present on the mountain meeting with Moses and giving to him the Ten Commandments. When Christ the Son of God came, he bore with him none of the spectacle of that past occasion. St. Paul tells us that though he was in the form of God, 
he put that aside and became as men are, and humbler still. But there was a further surprise to come. It was that the word made flesh would be our constant food for all the generations to come. He himself would be our manna from heaven. He himself would be the loaves distributed to all his spiritually hungry people. He would have himself even look like mere bread. The difference is that this bread is not mere bread, as was the manna and as were the loaves of the gospel I read. This bread, by the word of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, has been changed into the body and blood, the soul and the divinity of the risen Jesus. The Jesus, whole and entire, in all his human and divine reality, is given to us in the Holy Eucharist. And it is this same Jesus, under the appearances of bread, who remains with us in our tabernacles, day and night in our parish churches. The living goal and divine source of the church and of all creation is contained in the tiny consecrated host. Indeed, the living God made man is not just in that tiny host. He is that tiny and humble host. Bread is there no longer, but only Jesus. That vulnerable host is the object of the church's constant adoration and should be unceasingly recognized by each of us as the summit and the source of our whole Christian life. Let us remember this constantly. Because this requires faith in the word of Christ, so often we ignore his real presence. We cannot see Christ's physical person, but only the appearance of bread. And so all too often we act as if we are in the presence of mere bread. We forget what has happened as a result of Christ's word and the power of the Holy Spirit. It has at times been claimed that the reverence displayed by the average Muslim in his mosque is greater than the reverence shown by, the, by many Catholics in their churches, even though in the Catholic Church there is present the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings whole and entire in the Holy Eucharist. Let us resolve to distinguish ourselves constantly by our lively faith in the real presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist and by our constant reverence for his divine person there. 